It's National Beer Day. Welcome to the Paper Chase Channel. Back with another episode. This one's a little different. This one's more fun. One reason is it's National Beer Day, and my do we love beer, but I am not the only one that's drinking beer today. Kylo's gonna have some beer as well. That is right, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is beer for dogs, called Good Girl. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. I only have 94 subscribers. Uh, nobody's sponsoring me. But this is really cool, and I just wanted to share it with you guys as Kylo tries it with me. If you can have a beer with your dog and buy a common collection in the same day, it is a great day. Here's a QR code if you can scan it. Don't know if that's how that works, but let's see. Hey, wait. You can't pass out already, dude. Come on. Let's give this a go. Mmm. Ingredients are homemade chicken broth, turmeric, ginger, basil, carrots, fennel, water. All right. Ready? Let's see. Ooh. Mmm. Yes. Very good. Mmm. Does it smell good? Yeah. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. <laughs> Wait, hold on. And she's like, Dad, I've been sober for three months. Try it. Just a little taste. Wanna try this? Wanna dip a treat in it? Hmm? In case anybody's wondering, this is not gonna be me and my dog on every single uh, show I do, though she is very entertaining. But if she's here and I'm lacking background visuals until my room is set up, well, we're gonna use her. We're gonna hang with her, because she's cool. If we drop a treat in the beer, what happens? Mm -mm. She literally avoided the beer for the treat. Not saying it's bad, I've never tried it, but she will drink water to get a treat and she wouldn't even uh, touch this stuff. Maybe it's just not for every dog, it's just not to her liking. Some people don't like beer at all, right? We don't know if those people have souls or not, but, uh-oh. It took me about five years. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve, here, here's more treats. <laughs> Such a good dog. Okay, back to the books. So today, I actually bought a comic collection. A great way, if you're looking to pick up collections, is just ask. I looked for people that were having garage sales, and I messaged one beforehand, said, do you happen to have any comic books? And the guy sends me a picture of two long boxes and some issues of some number ones that he took, saying that he was looking to move all of them. And I will tell you what I paid at the end of the video. I did not film inside. Uh, I just really don't feel comfortable taking out my phone and filming the inside of their house. Plus, you're trying to make a deal. You're trying to do business. And I do think it kind of takes away from that when you start to film the process. But I did film a little bit on the way there and also did film a little bit going through the books. But yeah, here you go, check it out. So, we are heading about five miles from where I live to pick up a collection, hopefully this is two long boxes of books that he purchased in the 90s that have pretty much been bagged and bored since. So we know with a 90s collection, we're gonna have probably a high print run on a lot of these books. But if there's one book I'm hoping is in this, it is a personal grail of mine, which would be a New Mutants 98, first appearance of Deadpool. Don't have it on the list. So hopefully we can run into that one. The deal has been done. This is one box here. And then you can see the two long boxes in the back there. We're gonna get home, unpack this, and see what we got. I can't wait. He did have a box on the side of like kind of some random books. And this was sitting on the top here. <laughs> All 
right, so there you saw it. Looked like a couple of boxes of a bunch of 90s books. This was a, it was a great buy. It was a great purchase. I got an incredible deal. But I've definitely found bigger books in other collections. Uh, not to say that there wasn't any in this. There were. There were no books that were like crazy stupid expensive here. And of course I can sell a lot of these on my eBay and uh, Instagram and whatnot pages. All of those links will be listed below in the description. First, we've got an issue of Marvel Comics Presents number one. So this is probably a VF copy, nothing worth slabbing. And we had some great Frank Miller Spawn versus Batman. Really nice copy here. Uh, definitely a near mint minus at the very least. There's actually a few books in here that I'm thinking about just slabbing just because I like them uh, and I would just like to get them encapsulated. Next we have two issues of Spawn 1. One of these is a 9.8 candidate. The other one is a probably a 9.4 uh, or a 9.2. So I probably will grade the 9.8 candidate and sell the other one. Again, keep in mind guys that the eBay, the whatnot, and Instagram are in the description where I do sell some of these books. Now, of course, if we've got Spawn, what's always in that run? Number nine, first appearance of Angela. This is a pretty decent copy. The hard thing about this book is that the cover, the back cover, is black. So always, always, uh, that's where your spine ticks are gonna show. And from the front, you would think, yeah, that's a great copy. Then turn it over to the back, and of course, we've got one or two ticks, putting this at probably a 9.4 to a 9.2. And next up, we have Avengers number 257. First appearance of Nebula, newsstand edition. And uh, definitely not a slab-worthy copy, probably a 7.0, 7.5. And following that, we have the classic Gambit Rogue cover on X-Men 24. This is from Volume 2. This is a really high grade copy. This might be... Where are you at? Focus. Maybe worth submitting. Continuing on with the X-Men, this is one of my favorite X-Men covers. This is X-Men issue 234. New stand edition. I would love one of these in a 9.8. This is definitely not going to be it. I already have a new stand copy of this. Um, that's also not a 9.8, but continuing on we have X-Men number 245 There we go uh, New stand edition this contains a cameo appearance of a lot of different characters so you can see on the second page you've got You've got Yoda you've got Boba Fett you've got E.T. So pretty cool and continuing on with X-Men, we have issue number 256. This is the debut of the new Psylocke costume. This is a new stand edition. This is actually pretty high. No, it's not. Never mind. <clears throat> Corner crease. Um, this is a pretty decent copy for a new stand, though. So this is the first appearance of Psylocke's uh, new costume. And next, we have a book that is heating up. X-Men, I sold, I had like seven copies of this at one time, and I sold pretty much all of them. Um, but this is X-Men number 239, first cover appearance of Mr. Sinister, and this is a pretty high grade copy. Um, this one's probably gonna go out to CGC. Okay, next we had X-Men number 244, new stand edition, first appearance of Jubilee, this is not a high grade copy. It's got a couple of dings in it that break color and just some moderate wear. Definitely a book that I don't have right now in my X-Men run, so and I will probably end up keeping this one. Uh, I like to slab the X-Men keys and I'm also building just an X-Men run. So I do have some reader copies. Uh, so this is probably gonna stay in the collection as a reader copy. We have X-Men 282 and 283. First cameo and full appearance of Bishop. I have a ton of both of these books. Um, 
Neither of these are going to probably go out to CGC. This one might. I don't know if y'all have, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed. This book, I find is always in great shape. I don't know why, but this book is always super high grade every time that I find it. Um, yeah. Okay, another 90s book that I didn't realize warrants some high dollar amounts if it's a 9.8. This is Venom the Enemy Within. This is actually a glow-in-the-dark cover, but as you can see, it's black and they are just super hard to get in 9.8s. And this one is a candidate for sure. So I will be sending this one out to CGC to get graded. Uh, I think 9.8s, they had a couple on eBay for like three to $400, which is, which is actually pretty surprising. Okay, definitely gonna hang on to this next one and wait for the signature. I don't like to get artist signatures uh, unless they are on a particular cover. Or if the cover is a first, I like to get the artist's signature on it. So for instance, there's a classic Samurai Santa, Jim Lee's uh, first uh, comic work. I actually do wanna get those signed by Jim Lee. I think that would be really cool. But this one is Gen 13 issue one. This is the first cover art by J. Scott Campbell. And this is a super high grade copy that I'm going to send out to get signed as soon as he can make his way to CGC. And what would a 90s collection be without the entire run of Venom Lethal Protector? This is a really high grade copy of this book. Probably, uh, yeah, this is gonna, definitely gonna go out to CGC. This is a book you really, I really don't slab unless it's a 9.8, so I'm gonna probably send this one out in a 9.8 pre-screen with other ones. And another book is Spider-Man Unlimited. This is the first issue in the Maximum Carnage run, and we have a new stand edition here. Really high grade. Is it a 9.8? It is not. Uh, this is probably like a 9.6 or 9.4. Couple of spine ticks. Not sure what I want to do with this. I love high grade newsstands. Um, I really do. So this might be one I just get slabbed for myself. And if it comes back a 9.4 with a cool label, um, I'll be happy with it. It's fine. Now this one was a bummer. This book was beat to hell. I wish this was in better condition. Marvel Team Up 141 ties for the first appearance of uh, the black suit on Spidey. If you see me out and you want this book, I'll give it to you. Another good X-Men book is X-Men issue number 248. This is the first Jim Lee cover art on the X-Men, which is really cool. This is a new stand, not a 9.8. Really wish it was, but classic cover. Great book to have in a newsstand. Another book that I always seem to run into on every collection and comic shops constantly is X-Force issue two. This is the second appearance of Deadpool. And now my favorite book in the entire collection that I found, a book that's been on my list for a while. We have issue one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures. Newsstand copy here. Definitely gonna grade it. Is it a 9.8? No, it is not. Do I care? No, I do not. It's really cool. I'm really happy I came across this one. Uh, I just really, I've really been looking for that. I love the cover art on it. It just screams nostalgia for me. If I had to put a grade on it, I would think this might be like a 9.0 or 9.2, which is fine. I'll take it all day long. We will find out one day. A fun book that I found, because I'm from New Orleans, right? New Orleans Saints, issue one. First appearance of Morton Anderson in comics. And also the first appearance of Bobby Hebert, and probably Jim Mora, probably Ricky Jackson. Uh, this was published in the spring of 88. This is really cool and awesome. I told my friend Anthony I might give it to him. Actually, I told him I would give it to him. I guess it means I have to give it to him now, doesn't it? 
but he's got to come get it. I'm not bringing this to him. He needs to come pick this up. You have one month to pick this up. And if you don't, I'm retracting my offer. And I'm going to get it slabbed. But that's about it, guys. Those are the notable books. Those are the ones. Again, like I said, nothing too crazy. This is not the best collection that I've ever bought by any means. But the value was there. This was extremely worth what I paid. And are you ready for what I paid? Two long boxes, all the keys that you saw, $125. Extremely grateful to the seller who gave me just a great deal. In the description below, I will have links for the Instagram, eBay, and whatnot store where you might see some of these books. I need a sign off. I don't have a sign off. I can't say keep your comics because somebody already took that one. Um, you know what's funny too with Gary and keep your comics? I love how at the end of all of his videos, he says keep your comics, but his entire brand is based off of buying comics for people that do not keep them. Uh, so it's just kind of funny. Um, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I think he's brilliant. So yeah, I need a sign off. Uh, comment below what you think a Paper Chase channel sign off would be. Maybe I can give away a free book if I decide to choose one of them, but I need a sign off. Until then, I thank you. Kylo thanks you. And remember, sell me your comics.